Welcome to my channel. On today's episode of Long Arm Quilting, I'm going to be working on this Log Cabin Star quilt. And this quilt is 66 by 84. So right now I am stapling on the backing, which is a flannel backing. And I'm using my electric stapler to staple it on to the leaders. And then I just kind of throw it over the back and roll it up until it meets the back leader. And then I'll go ahead and staple that on. This is usually the easiest for me. It only takes me about five minutes to load the backing and it always comes out straight and I don't have any problems with pleating. So I'm using Hobbs 8020 and um, this is by the roll so I buy by the batting by the roll and then I just cut it to the size I need. So I'm just getting ready to load the top. I'm looking at this quilt and I'm wondering what I'm gonna do. So I had originally thought maybe I would do a little custom quilting like uh, Maybe some kind of all over pattern in the star and then something else in the white and then something else in the borders. I don't know, no, if I feel like doing that. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just a, a cheap sample quilt <laughs> that I was testing out uh, to see if I could do these blocks. I know half of you will probably say, oh, I just custom quilt it. Look it. These points aren't even very good. Look at that. Oh, what happened there? I mean, all the other ones are good. What happened to that one? Don't know. Okay, I took it back off and I fixed that. It's not perfect still, but it's a lot better. I'm currently using Permacord thread on this project and I'm going to use this off white. It's kind of a yellowish white. I'm winding about five bobbins and I think that'll be enough for this project. I have to change my thread. I originally put the turquoise on but I need to use the white first. So I'm going to go, go ahead and change it and um, pull it through the system after I tie it on. This makes it easy to change your thread. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a new needle in and I'm using my needle magnet to kind of get the needle in the position I want it in. And I'll just go ahead and thread the needle. Now I'm just going to test my tension real quick. Usually I test it on something separate, but today I'm testing it on the side of the fabric. And then I'm just getting ready to um, base the top of the quilt down. And I just put my channel locks on and uh, kind of adjust the quilt as I'm going or the quilt top makes it easy I stopped putting a line on a long time ago this is a little bit quicker and it does the job just fine so I'm going to base down the sides real quick I probably should have rolled it up a little bit more so I could base down a little bit further but I didn't So I have a little dilemma. So if I want to do a little bit of custom quilting, I need to baste it down a little bit because I I, can't, I have the white on and I kind of want to do the white, but I don't know. I mean, this part is a little too big to just kind of leave it unbasted, but if I, put stitches through this. I have found that the stitches on a certain printed fabric, and I know this is one of them, it doesn't really come out. It, 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 you still see the needle marks, so I don't want to do that. So, I don't know. Well, I decided to go ahead and stitch in the ditch um, with the white, and I'll just go ahead and stitch around this this block. I 
so I'm usually doing stitch in the ditch when I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. So it gives me a little bit of time to think. I hadn't really planned this out in my head before I started, so we'll see what happens. So I need to stitch in the ditch around this triangle, but I don't have my ruler plate on. And I've just been doing all the stitch in the ditch by just moving the machine. It's pretty easy with the belts on to get it straight. I can't do that. So I think I will draw a line on my computer and then stitch it real slow. We'll see how that works. So here's my triangle I drew. I'm taking my stitches per inch. Um, sorry, my speed down to five. And we're gonna stitch this really slow and see if I can do it. When you're stitching in the ditch like this with your machine, you do want to go as slow as you can or, or as fast as you feel that you can control the fabric because you want to kind of surf the fabric a little bit and you can manipulate it some, make sure it stays in the ditch. Uh, just keep your hands, you know, close to where you're going and you can kind of tell where it's, it's about to go or not about to go and uh, adjust it. It's not really that hard. It's just, I don't know. I feel like I could probably do this a lot faster if I put my ruler plate on and then just did it with my ruler. But it's possible to do this with just your machine if you have a computerized machine. You can do all your stitch in the ditch same way as you see me doing it right now. I think it's just a little bit slower, but in this respect, I think it, it worked out because it, it was easier to do the 45 degree angles on the inside of the triangle. Wow, that worked out good. So I'm just kind of winging it. I think I'm going to use this pattern and it's going to be really big on this square. So let's see what it looks like. I think before I use this pattern again, I am going to have to do some work on it. It just stitched this out and then it came back over here and stitched this flower out and then it went over the flower again because it couldn't get itself out of there. But there's a better way of doing it. So I might have to do some work on this pattern. Okay, here's the block all stitched out, and it looks very beautiful. And then as I was watching it stitch out, I was like, I think I drew this. And yeah, I think I made this block for my embroidery machine, and I think I uh, created it for my quilting machine, but it needs work, lots of work. I don't think I've ever stitched it out, and yeah, there's problems. I can definitely do a better job. It still looks pretty. It took about 15 minutes to, for one block. So I'm just going to continue using it. And then when I'm done with this quilt, I'll fix that block. So here's another block that I made. I have never tried. So we're going to try this one in the uh, triangle. It's the next morning and I'm looking at my quilt and I figured this was going to happen, but I'm not going to be able to put this uh, triangle in my quilting space. It's just too big. So I'm going to end up having to turn the quilt. And so what that means is I'm just going to have to stitch in the ditch around the triangle on the borders right here through the center and try to get the blocks all uh, stitched down as best I can. Come down and finish these white ones and then um, I will probably go back to the top and do this white border I'm just going to freehand some feathers on it. And then when I turn it, I'll do the side ones. 
because I'm going to do an edge to edge. I already have it um, planned out. I'm going to do this flower design that I have as an edge to edge in the middle. And then uh, some, some of these flowers for the border. But um, I'm going to create a, like a, a line that's a quarter inch away from the edge. And then I'll do the edge to edge within that. All the stitch in the ditch is done. All the um, white pieces are done except for the side triangles. And so I think I'm going to go ahead and start um, doing the, the white border here. Okay, let's do a little recap right now. So the quilt top cost me $115 to, to make if you go and buy fabric at the, the quilt shop. This was actually a bunch of leftover fabric I had, so it really didn't cost me much. The batting cost $20, the backing was about $50, so a grand total of $185 for the top. And as far as the quilting goes, it took me about 20 minutes to do the setup, changing the thread, cleaning the machine, etc. And then about an hour and 20 minutes to do the stitch in the ditch. Uh, 15 minutes per daisy block, which was an hour. And then six minutes for the triangles, which was 24 minutes. And uh, these white borders took about uh, seven minutes to free motion quilt them. So I did four of those. And then the wide top and bottom border took me about 50 minutes. And then there's a flower border that took me 24 minutes. And then to do the edge to edge in the middle of the star took me an hour and 30 minutes. So a total of six hours to do all the quilting on this quilt. Okay, I finished the top border. I actually stitched these out with my computer, the little hearts, and made a heart. And so they all look the same. I actually did a much better job on the top with the back stitching uh, than I did on the bottom. It was hard to see the bottom one, so it was hard to see where I needed to go. This one was a little easier. I changed my thread to this um, kind of turquoise. It doesn't quite match, but it'll be fine. And I'm getting ready to do this border. I am going to do this design I made a long time ago and so what I did is I drew a boundary then I drew a line and then I applied this um, design to the line and it kind of calculated it for me and I can delete that line and of course it's just a little bit too tall but we can fix it we'll just scrunch it up a little bit and scrunch it up this way a little bit and this way a tiny bit and I think that looks pretty good and we'll go ahead and stitch it up all right it's stitching the, the feathers out I didn't really show a lot of the white stitching out because it's really hard to see it on the camera um, but hopefully we can get some shots afterwards. Even this is kind of hard to see. Let's see, I told you the thread, even though it doesn't match exactly, it will blend in. I'm going to do this border next, and it's just the small border. And I'm going to use this little daisy design to do the border. So here's the completed border, and I think it looks pretty good. It just blends in. You can't really see anything but it still looks nice so i'm getting ready to do my edge to edge in the middle of the star so how am i going to do that so i had to try a couple of different things and what i ended up doing i took and created a repeat pattern and i just uh, made it the length i thought that would fit in the inside of the quilt so I kind of measured it and this is what I have so now I drew a boundary on the top of the quilt where the star is and so I'm just 
looking at the patterns on the end, see if they cross over the borders and they don't, so they'll probably get deleted. And then these top two are going to be filled inside the top boundary that I made. And I'm going to make it a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And I like the way it looked. Do you necessarily have to do that? No, you can actually stitch all the way to the edge if you want, but this is the way I did it. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill inside these two blocks that are at the top of the star. And then I'll do, go ahead and delete the ones on the outside because they don't cross anything, so I don't need those. So we're just going to stitch these two rows you're not working on just toggle them sewn so that it doesn't try to go and quilt the next row so i think it's uh, stitching out pretty good that's the first one that's stitched out and then i'll show you what i'm going to do next i drew a line around my star where the quarter inch border was and i stitched it with my computer and i would not recommend that you do this until you get all your inside done because it did cause me some problems so on the the rest of the quilt I didn't do it until I finished all the edge to edge okay I'm starting on the second row and I rolled my quilt and moved everything to this point Right here because it was the easiest to locate so I left this um, little drawn border that I had I took this row and made it unsewn and now I'm getting ready to um, fill inside all these patterns on this row All right, so there's what the second row looks like that we're gonna stitch out. All right, I've finished my second row. How did it go? Well, not quite as good as I thought. Had to take some stitches out here, redraw the boundary again, and redo it. Um, I didn't have any problems through here, and then I ended up having problems right here. So what am I going to do different? I am not going to draw the outline. You can see how close it is over here too. I am not going to draw the outline until I get everything stitched out and then I'll try to draw the outline. Okay, I am on the last row of my edge to edge in my star and it's going pretty good. Um, don't outline before you get your star finished or your whatever it is you're Try to do an edge to edge. Um, I'll have to do that afterwards. So I think it turned out pretty good. It looks really good. And it took about mm, a little over an hour, maybe an hour and 20 minutes to do this particular pattern, which is a little bit more um, intense than the first pattern I was gonna do. So I think it's gonna look really, really well. And I used, so far I've used, um, four bobbins of the white and this is my fifth bobbin of the green. I'm all finished with the star. I just want to show you what it looks like on the screen. It looks pretty cool. Now I'm going to go through and create that outline on the, the edge. Some of it is already there. I'm just going to connect it. If you're wondering how I did the outline, I just went and connected the lines. I overstitched a couple of areas, but for the most part, I uh, just went in between. This is what my screen looks like. It, I just drew some lines with the draw line command, and then I just stitched it between all the open spaces to create a continuous line. I'm getting ready to turn this quilt a lot of extra fabric here so I'll probably go to the cutting table and 
uh, cut it straight on this end because we don't need all this extra. So I'm putting the quilt back on just like I loaded my backing. And I use a stapler and I staple mine on to the front leader and then throw it over the back and then staple it on to the back leader. You're going to use whatever process that you normally do to load your quilt. And if you're pinning, you would just pin it the way that you're comfortable with doing. If you're using red snappers, then you would use those. So just do it the way you feel comfortable. Don't do it the way that I do it. All right, I'm getting ready to free motion this border. Um, just have to do this one and then uh, the one on the top, just like this. My camera's a little bit in my way, so forgive me if I don't get this exactly perfect. <laughs> It's dragging a little bit, almost like I have the belts on, but I don't. I'm getting ready to do this triangle, and there's a little bit of fullness in this triangle, so I'm gonna try to smooth it out as it goes. Since this is the side triangles that I didn't do when I was uh, quilting most of the front, they do have a little bit of fullness. It's a big tri triangle to leave unquilted, and so it, it worked out fine. It's not like it was something uh, really bad or anything like that. It just uh, just a little puffy. I'm almost done with this quilt. I'm doing the last triangle, and then I got one. Uh, free motion hooking to do on the border and I'll be done. This is actually pretty easy. Anyway, this thing is going to look beautiful. Like I said, I have just a tiny bit of quilt shop fabric in here and the rest of it came from Joanne's. I had bought the white fabric to do some testing for our embroidery, so I just used that. I was testing this log a cabin block that I am making a pattern for for something else and so this was the result and so it's just a, a test quilt that's going to be pretty and I'll probably give it away to somebody I'm getting ready to cut the quilt off the frame I'm just using my electric scissors this is the way I always do it I like um, taking the extra fabric off before I have to uh, straighten out the quilt or square up the quilt. So I had estimated that it took about six hours to quilt this quilt, but towards the end I realized that, you know, I had some other issues that came up and it actually took me about seven hours to quilt it. Okay, here is the finished quilt and I'll give do a close-up of it after I finish trimming it. And there's nothing to see on the back. It all blends in. Let's recap a little bit as we're looking at the quilt. Um, this quilt was 66 by 84, and if I charge 0.04, um, it would cost $221 to do the quilting, so the grand total for this whole quilt would be $406. And I think it turned out really beautiful. Um, even my free motion quilting doesn't look too bad. And uh, I think I did a pretty good job, especially for a quilt that was just a practice or just a test quilt. And so don't be afraid to quilt those quilts that you don't think that are worth it.